Okay, I'm going to give you guys a tip. Put this on before you start bashing your subframe. Do it before you start beating on it, not after you beat the crap out of it like I do. What's going on guys? This is Douglas Four Wheel Drive Trek and I'm sure you've probably already guessed it. Today is the day skid plates are going on. I'll show you in a second, but my skid plate right now for the gas tank and the cross and the transmission, it is so beaten. Okay, insert here the skid plates that are currently on there. Oh man, these plates, man, they're so bad. As you probably see from my other videos, I actually take it off-road and I I use it for what it needs to be. I got the Rubicon re version for a reason and these skid plates are going to help protect so much. So anyway, you can see why I need some new skid plates. Now these are Hawk Off-Road. I'm sure none of you guys have heard of it before because I never heard of it before until I actually found them and they are amazing. The front skid plate is, as you can see right here, is actually kind of curved and goes around the engine itself. So it protects all the underside of the engine and the transmission, which I really, really, really like. All the ones are flat and they kind of like stop right at the front of the engine, whereas this one kind of hugs up underneath, which hopefully I'm thinking is gonna protect it a lot more. And of course it has that little triangle spot to get to the access to replacing your oil. Super easy, super convenient right there. And one thing I will point out is these welds look really, really solid. Uh, everything's all bent up real nice. Welds look really solid. So I have no doubt these skid plates are gonna be holding up really, really well. I know it's not a good thing that they're heavy because you don't want your vehicle to be heavy, but it is heavy duty. And I'm willing to uh, sacrifice a little bit of that extra weight to add on this extra steel plating because, uh, yeah, I, uh... And as you saw, I need it. So, yeah, let's spray these down and uh, jump on uh, getting them installed. Okay, I can't believe I just did that. I was shaking the can up, got the camera ready, and started shaking the camera like crazy. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. Anyway, so shaking up the paint here. It's uh, nice and warm. It's been sitting in the sun for a little bit, so it should be nice and warm and atomized, ready to be sprayed. <laughs> the things I do sometimes, I, I don't understand. All right, let's paint him. Okay, so they are all painted. And I got to say, it's kind of nice painting without having to really care what it looks like. As long as it's all covered, it's going to dry up pretty thick. And it's going to look bad, but who cares? It's going to be on the top. All I'm doing is preventing it from rusting. So I'm gonna let this dry, and then we're gonna throw it right up on underneath. But one thing I really, really like, I noticed right off the bat, is this right here. Each and every box is actually labeled to be, you know, transfer case skid, engine skid, gas tank skid. They're all separate. They're all labeled, and that right there is uh, attention to detail. I really like that. Looking at all these instructions, they are very, very thorough, but I mean, it's uh, that's like quite a bit of instructions there. Shouldn't be too bad. Said like a couple hours shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be bad at all. All right, let's hop to. It's all dry. All right, first thing instructed to say is drop this guy down. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I just found my, my rattle that I have. I've been having this rattle for so long, couldn't figure out where it's at, and well, all right, that's nice. Let me, uh, let me pull this guy off.
did forget to take off this cross member right here. This cross member does need to come out. Got two bolts, one on either side here and one directly in the middle. That does have to come. Okay, so after some quick uh, searching, I found where I need to go. So this bolt up here needs to loosen up and I need to remove this nut. Then those plates are gonna actually sit on here, come down and nut off the passenger side and loosen up the driver's side. All right, when you're putting this on, make sure this is on the inside of the drive shaft. Don't do the mess up I just did. All right, just so I can point out, we got one bolt up top up here. That is the engine mount bolt. You take the nut off the passenger side, put this bracket up, on that nut, put the nut back on. Don't tighten it all the way. They're gonna put these two nuts in and these bolts. On this side, we're gonna loosen up the bolt by removing, we're gonna loosen up the nut on this side to give access to this bolt, got the spacer, and we put the uh, bracket and the spacer around the edge of this bolt here. But now we got the, uh, the front of it in. Now I just need to get the back of it in. Once I get the back of it in nice and tight, I can tighten up all the bolts and then the, the oil and transmission skid plate is complete and we can move on to the next plate. All right, this part's a little more difficult. You gotta get this up in the hole, get a washer up through this hole on top of the bolt. Then the nut on top of that. So you gotta get this tightened up a little bit. Hold it like that for a bit, but... All right, got it. It's not fully tight yet, but that's the point. We wanna make sure everything's all nice and tight, nice and straight. I gotta measure this out, make sure this is the same width as that down there. Tap it into place and uh, drill out the hole on the other side. All right, we've got 1.9. Well, darn, that's already perfect. Yeah, throw a little spray paint on the hole here. A little rest prevention there. Last bolts for this. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a tip. Put this on before you start bashing your subframe. This bracing here <laughs> is bashed up quite a bit that I'm having a hard time getting up in on the backside and holding these nuts. I got them, but oh man. All right, now it is time for the transfer case supposedly Whew. I guess uh Having a second set of hands is going to be very, very helpful for a job like this. Oh, that sound. There's like a little baby hole right here. It's a easy one. It already has threads in it. Another factory location. Makes that one super, super nice. All right, let's see if this will work. No. 
Well, I guess it's just the uh, just the engine skid plate. Okay, now it's next morning, and we have daylight again, which is going to help a lot. So, skid plate. This guy is the big one. This is the gas tank one. I would say this one in itself is probably 75 pounds. So I'm going to use a jack to help me out. Get it propped up, pressed up against there. According to the directions, you got to take the plate, press it up, and then you take a gas tank skid plate bolt out, put the bracket on, put the bolt back in. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, bolt on, bolt off, bolt on, bolt off. But it should be pretty straightforward. It's almost there. Then I got to go test it. After smashing it a whole bunch, this does not want to bend back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the angle grinder and actually just trim it off. It's not connecting anything. It's not holding anything. I mean, there's no real point to having this little extra spot here since I'll be covering it up anyway. So let's cut it off. And I do want to point out, got to be very careful because that is the gas tank full of gasoline right now. Don't want to hit that. <laughs> that worked. One thing to remember with this is if it's going to be pointing down, make it round. <laughs> that rhyme. So like the other ones, you want to make sure these are all loose still. You don't want to tighten up fully, but I'm just going to leave it like that. A little loose. We'll come back later and tighten absolutely everything up. Final bracket we got is actually like a really weird and crooked one, which up here the gas tank actually sits in all crooked. So this sits right here and bolts in there. So it'll be a little harder one to film, so I'm gonna not film it, but I'm gonna be putting that in there just like the same as the others. And then, like I said, I keep saying, don't tighten it down all the way until you're all the way done. I changed the battery in the camera here and I set it down because I had to respond to a text message. I could not find out where the camera went. And I left it right on my bumper. And I've been wandering around for like 20 minutes trying to find this dang camera. We got all the brackets on. I'm going to drop the jack, put that in the front and push up the front so all that lines up. With that, we're going to use the round hardware that goes into the factory locations. Makes it super, super easy. Once those are in, there's going to be a blocking plate that sits on top of the, the transfer case and the gas tank to hold those two guys together. And run through and tighten absolutely everything up. So close to being done. Almost. Almost. So, we got one strap pulling it this way. One strap pulling it that way. But I got it all lined up. Uh, I did use the factory bolts here just because the uh, it's button head wasn't quite threading in. Once I get everything all tightened down, everything all set, I'll probably pull them out, put the button heads back in. But this way I was able to use the, uh, the impact gun on it, get them all nice and tight up in there. So 
Yep. So now I got this plate. This plate goes up in here. So I am going to be drilling through two different sections of this. Two holes, got the top and bottom of this entire brace. So I'm going to do uh, smaller holes, pilot holes, step it up a little bit, make it a little easier here. Now that the holes are drilled, all I gotta do is put the bracket back on right here and then bolt it up right here. All right, so I got the bracket on here, as you can see. Two up here, two down here, holds this tight. Now it is time to go through and tighten up every single one of these bolts that I put on and also took off. So you already saw me take them off, put them on. I'm not going to show that part just because it's a little boring for me to just go there, tighten everything through. So tighten everything up and then we're just about done. <laughs> And that is gonna be it for the day it is quite exciting got those skid plates in and they are looking super nice now i do have a couple frustrations that have zero to do with the uh, hawk off road um, unfortunately my skid plates are so bashed up originally uh, that nothing really lined up very well as you saw i had ratchet stripes trying to pull things different directions and lining things up they had that has zero to do with hawk off road i'm excited that these are on here it's going to help protect it a lot better and hit some lot crazier rock crawling and things like that in the future check out my latest video before this one right here up top uh it's gonna be where i t went out with goat off-road bug and uh joe definitely check that out it's pretty awesome this is prior to skid plates so uh, you can see how much i got stuck up on stuff there and bashed in my original ones and i know bug is gonna be jealous joe's gonna be jealous that i have these skid plates on here and they're probably gonna have to follow that and get their own hopefully soon. Anyway, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're all up to date on all the videos that we have going on right now. Hit that like button for me and let me know, where do you want me to test these skid plates out? Let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna have to see you guys later.